What's up guys? We're going to do part two of the membrane trap tutorial here. Last time, or in, in step one, I went through how I built these enclosures. And uh, since then I've just mounted them on the wall. I'm still waiting for some metal to come in, but in the meantime, it starts like this. So we have the enclosure here on the wall. And like I said before, this blue line here is where the membrane will will be. Everything behind it will be insulation. Everything in front of it will be insulation. But the important thing is that the insulation does not touch the membrane as it as it resonates. So in this next trap, I've put the insulation is just regular R13. And as you can see, it just kind of chills there behind. And then to make sure that it does not at all come forward, I've put this uh, 701 here, Guilford's uh, main 701. Now you don't have to use it. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't use it. I had some leftover from another project. I would probably just use maybe a burlap or something like that. It just needs to be breathable. And it just needs to, again, make sure that the, the fiberglass behind here doesn't come forward and touch the membrane, which will be along here. And then after the membrane's in place, I'll put another retaining piece of fabric like this and then um, insulation and then more, more fabric over top for the facade. So that's pretty much where we're at for that step. The next step is to build the the membrane itself which is two pieces of rubber uh sandwiching between sandwiching a uh piece of sheet metal of varying sizes depending upon what resonant resonance you want or which which frequency you want to trap okay here we got our epdm rubber which we're going to use to create the membrane for our traps here's the sheet metal in various thicknesses all cut to the same size to fit into the enclosures so I'm going to cut these out or cut out sheets of this which will then have the uh, stainless steel sandwich between so I'll need two pieces of this per membrane I've cut two pieces here it's going to represent the front and the back of the membrane and again we're going to sandwich one of these pieces of sheet metal right between it with some glue so I'm going to cut out I guess eight more of these which will make four more membranes and then glue them all up and then we'll be ready to frame all right I got my first sheet here it now has glue on it but before that I just cleaned it up with some acetone and then scuffed it up with a scotch bright uh, course the coarsest I could find just to get a little more purchase for the glue hopefully uh, then here I've added my first layer of glue which once they get basically the way this stuff works it's like contact cement so it, it the the solvent um, evaporates off and then becomes just slightly tacky to the touch when it's ready and then you bond the two pieces together hopefully anyway all right the first one is finished here I just put a little s on there because it's going to go on the side it's one of the thinner pieces of metal so now four more to go right, we got all our angle here what I'm doing here is uh, I've just marked this out on a, a piece of wood where I want my holes to be so I made little marks hopefully you can see here right there I'm gonna use a center punch and then I'm gonna drill it when I do I'm gonna actually clamp this piece to another piece so I can drill straight through and create the, the quote unquote sandwich for the frame. I'll show you in the next video or in the next clip. Okay, clamp these up and I already drilled a couple. So basically look, that's what we've created here. And then we're just drilling on through. It's not too bad. A little bit of three-in-one oil, make sure the bit doesn't overheat. Slower is better than faster, again, so you don't heat up the bit. And we just uh, progress down the row here. I've already done a couple. Now that I'm halfway down, I'm going to reclamp and do the other side, just making sure that this is as straight flush as possible, because this is this is the side that's going to go against the uh, 
enclosure, the membrane's going to go between here across this way. All right, so we have the frame. We lay it out on the membrane here. A couple things that need to be done first off is make sure that everything is spaced properly. And then I use just a little screw and push it down into the holes and that will leave, leave a little mark as an indicator of where the holes are going to be. After this I'm going to remove the frame and do a, uh, a, a rough trim because there's so much excess on the sides and then use a hole punch to uh, punch out where I've indicated with the, the screws. Trimmed a little bit and you can see I've used the hole punch and just punched out all the holes. Now I've leaned it up on some 2x4s here which really helps to get the first side of the frame in. Alright, you get the first side in. Usually what I do here is just put a screw every couple holes just to get things going because this part is very challenging and very uh, frustrating for sure. So start a couple spaces apart. It, it, it helps you be able to go through one layer at a time and have some space versus if you started hole to hole because this is compressed it's harder to to see where this one's going and now that now that I have them sort of in I'll put the rest in and and tighten them loosely or loosely tighten them or not tighten them at all however you say that you know, once you have all four sides of the frame loosely screwed or, or whatever um, I I lay, uh, you can't see it, underneath there, there's a couple pieces of three-quarter inch, um, just strips of wood. And that's the same height as the three-quarter inch angle iron. So what it does is allows it to sit as it would naturally without anything bending or flexing. Give, gives it a second to relax a little bit. And then I'm going to just kind of massage the corners, make sure they're square before I start to tighten up all the screws. Uh, once I do that, we're going to put it in the uh, in the enclosure. All right, everything is tight, and I've trimmed the excess off. You see these little strips here. So we're ready to put it in the enclosure, which is right there. All right, I ended up putting it in the other trap. It fit a little bit better, but either way, no problem. Just. Uh, Use these screws to fasten it in that we made, and everything's in place. So there's that one. There's two others that I have in the back wall so far. I have one more to go here, and one more to go here. So two more, and then these are over. These are, I, I can't say it enough, these are the most challenging and frustrating traps you can make. All right, we have them all in. And that was, well, something else. Next up, I treated all the angle with some acetone again, just to try to get off as much of that, that cutting oil or, that I uh, used for drilling. Now I'm going to get some acoustic caulk and just run it along all the seams and make sure this is as airtight as possible. Uh, going to spend a little time just making sure that the, the cabinets themselves or the enclosures themselves are still airtight and once that's dry then I'm going to put in a fabric barrier for the the insulation that goes in the front of the trap so almost there I may have gone a little overboard with this the the caulk here I don't know if I needed to do the screws or not so I just did them anyway. But again, just making sure that all the, the cracks are, are filled with caulk. Again, the acetone was really important. I actually wish I did a little bit more of it on some of the inside pieces. But everything is good and set and ready to go. The next step is I have all of these frames here, which are going to create the, the fabric boundary that's gonna go right in front of the membrane. Okay, so the caulk looks like it's setting up nicely, so I'm going to move forward with the next fabric layer to protect the membrane from the, uh, the insulation in the front of the trap. So I've created this frame, which just fits nicely into here, and I'm going to put 
some fabric on there and put it into place here. All right, pretty simple. So we've stretched that over there as tall as we could make it. Now we're gonna put it in that trap and we should be good to go. All right, fit it right in there. Now that protects the membrane. Got about eh, just under three inches left, which is not a ton, but three inches of space left for some broadband fluffy stuff. After we get the, uh, the fabric in, just a couple pieces of fluffy, split in half, so it's about maybe an inch and a half to two inches, two inches probably, I mean an inch and three quarters, in the, uh, right after the fabric, and then after this we'll do Dacron. All right, the last step before the breathable fabric that goes over top is the layer of Dacron. This is, uh, is good to protect you from the, the fiberglass pieces that might come out of the trap, even though that's super unlikely. But I've put them in two of them already. Look like that. Ready for the breathable fabric. And then I'm going to do this one to wrap it all up here. All right, last step was to put on your fabric of choice, just as long as it's breathable, uh, standard acoustic fabric anyway. And that wraps up the membrane base traps. Thanks for watching. I know it was a long one. It was long for me as well. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Give me a like if you want. That'd be great. And uh, again, guys, I appreciate it. See you later.